Morning, welcome to We Repair. Um, so today we are going a little bit old school. Um, I've been asked to repair this iPhone 5. Um, needs a little bit of TLC because it's not feeling very loved at the minute. Uh, so I don't know if you can make that out on camera, but we've got lots of nice little lines going up and down the screen. Um, but it's just a sign of a defective LCD. Um, the owner of this one's also asked me to replace the battery as well. So we're going to do that while we're there. So first thing we're going to do, we've got our little pentalobe screws at the bottom. So this is Apple's generic -y screw. So just here and on this side, ooh, this side, there are two pentalobe screws which need to come out first. So we'll just get those undone. Take those out. Like that. And then we'll pop the screen out. Now I've had lots and lots of different tools and things over the years for popping these screens out. And to be honest with you, they're all pretty much as bad as each other. Some work well, some don't. The method I have used for the last few years is to get a very small blade, preferably a dull one, which is what I've got here, and to go just in between the screen and the chassis and just a very gently pry it up, just so you get it open. And then I do the rest of my nails, just like that. And then, so in this case, it looks like potentially the screen's been done before because the screen is separating from the frame just slightly. So you just have to work your way along and it will come. And then what we're gonna do, we'll open this up. Now what we're interested in, these three screws here to release the screen, and we're gonna do this here as well to get at the battery. Um, so just grab a Phillips and we'll disconnect our battery first as we always do. And that way we won't cause any other damage to the phone once we're connecting LCDs and such, because I've had it once before where a battery wasn't disconnected, screen lit up because a message came in and uh, blew the backlight. So yeah, always disconnect your battery. Right, so now I'm just going to throw this around just to make my life a little bit easier. Recenter you on camera. Right, so now we're going to undo these three screws here and we're going to remove this little metal plate. Our magnetic mat off to one side just up here, just holding my screws. Screw number three. Okay, now this plate will sometimes say suck down. It will just pry it from one side like that, and then you can just pull it away very gently. So that's that done. So, what we're interested in up here now, we've got two or three little connectors here that we're going to just pop out. So, you can use a spudger, I tend to just use my nail because it's I can usually get under it. And there's a one. They will just pop up two, and then a third one, number three, and that's our LCD assembly disconnected. So, what we'll do now is we'll do our battery. Now, so say Apple have made it so you can pull this tab and your battery will lift out. I rarely get this to work, so we will have a go and see if we can get it up. As you can see, a tab always comes off. Now, I, I end up usually having to pry these up. The one thing I will say is just around here, there's a little flex cable. Um, so you just need to be quite gentle when you're doing this. So I tend to grab a spudger, a, a metal spudger or a plastic one if you've got one, and find a point to pry just very carefully. And it will come. Like that. And then just be, as I say, really gentle when you get to the top bit up here because there's your flex there, just running here, so that runs your, your volume buttons on the side. Um, now, we'll just take this out as well, because I've got a new one. Get some nice new adhesive in there too. Let's just grab our new battery. Just quickly. So again, I'll pop this back in here, just like that, and hopefully I can just take this little plastic dubri off, he says. There There's our new battery sticker in place. 
Now let's grab our new battery. So there's a new battery. So the way I tend to do this is I will connect the battery at first, like that. <clears throat> Bend my flex cable a little bit so it's in the right place, and then pop it in and stick it down so that way everything is lined up right. Um, the battery terminal's in the right place, the battery's in the right place, and then I will disconnect it again before I do anything more. As you can see, using replace base, um, I know I'm getting good quality. It's always got a year's warranty on it. Um, so any problems, they'll sort it out for me. Right, next. So we need to get this screen assembly apart now. Um, we need to get the home button out, we need to get the speaker out, and then we can start transferring over to our new screen. So if you bought a completely naked one like I have, then it will come looking like this. Just bring it in and it will have nothing attached to it other than this purple back cover that you just peel off. Um, so we need to get everything off of our old screen and transfer it over to our new. So let's just get that done. So what we'll do first, we'll get our speaker assembly off. So two screws at the top here and then lift the speaker off which is just a speaker and a metal bracket. I don't know if you can see that. And then this is a little bit stuck down with adhesive. Now I get a small flat-headed screwdriver usually just to pry this top part off. Just very carefully work my way under the cable like that and there we are and it will pop out. Let's pop that off to one side. So that's everything at the top there disconnected. And now we'll do the bottom home button. So again, one screw, two screws. Now this is stuck down again, just under the two, uh, the two little prongs over here. Sometimes you can get lucky and it will come up. Sometimes it won't. Um, and the way I've always got around this again, you can heat it up, that's one way to do it. I tend to just use a little uh, blade and it will come if you're lucky. If it doesn't, there you go. Like that. Just be really careful. And if it doesn't come, then prepare to break your home button. Uh, then pop your button out. That's our home button, we're going to transfer that over. And then the last thing we need to do is undo the six screws holding the metal bracket in place. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Only other thing to mention as well, just as a nice repair tip. If this is red, um, the phone has been exposed to water. So you know you've got a water damaged handset potentially. Sometimes though, if they've been in a steamy environment, you'll also get the fact that they'll go red um, and actually they haven't been water damaged at all. It's just one thing to watch out for. Um, it won't necessarily hurt anything, but just as a troubleshooting piece, if you're having problems with the phone, you might find that that's the case. There is a couple of them in the phone that will go red, so you can sort of tell how far it's been exposed. So, two more. Okay, and now this will just lift out like that. And that's our old screen. Uh, it looks to be a genuine one as well. So it's probably never been worked on this phone. So bring our new one in. So metal bracket first, and then we're just doing essentially the reverse of what we did previously. So we'll just screw this one down. I like to do my top and my bottom first, and then it sort of lines up all the screws on the side. And then we'll do our two side ones on either side. One, two. And turn it around and we'll do the ones on this side. So again, these are quite small screws to work with, so you do need quite a fine Phillips. Last one. 
Right, so now home button back in. Just like that. Uh, home button. The actual button itself. And again, the two screws that hold that in. Sometimes I find you've got to adjust the screws on the back a little bit because the home button's not whether it doesn't sit quite as nicely as when it was in the OEM, the original screen, not the OEM. So I tend to peel the plastic back just a little bit, just make sure I get a good press on the home button as well, which we are. Last thing, so the only thing I didn't transfer off the old screen is this little plastic bracket that the camera sits in and lines everything up. So I tend to just take it out and then pop it back into my new screen and that way our camera is all lined up in the right place. Okay, next. So what we'll do, um, we've got our little mic jack here, we're going to just pu plug, push this into this little rubber grommet and then we'll fold the camera assembly over on itself like that and everything should fit down really nicely and snugly into place. And then our speaker pushes down like that. And then we've got our speaker bracket. Again, that will then hold absolutely everything in the right place. And I'll grab our two screws. So the shorter screw goes on the right hand side. And then the longer screw goes up the top here. And that will hold everything in place. So next thing we want to do, bring our phone back in, pull this around this way, and then I tend to hold all my connectors up like this. Now you do need to keep this at a bit of an angle when you refit the screen, otherwise it won't go in very nicely. So align your first cable, push it down until you hear a click. Second cable, until it clicks, and third cable. And all the meantime, you'll need to sort of tilt the screen, otherwise you won't get the right angle. Okay, and then our metal bracket. So that clips over the top like this, and it should just clip in on one side, so it's sort of pointing upwards a little bit, like that. So that's how you should have it, it'll pop up at a bit of an angle. And then what I tend to do is my furthest screw first so that it holds the bracket in place. So let's just get that in. So again, through the top here, and that occasionally happens as well. This is the point where you need 12 pairs of hands. I do have something that I can hold these iPhone 5s with, so it holds everything in place where you fit the screws in. So I'll just do it this way. There we go, and that will now hold the bracket in place enough that you can do the rest of the screws unhindered. Um, so let's just pop these on our screwdriver. And then the last one. And then we just need to connect our battery and put the battery cover back on. That's all that back in place, so battery cover now back on. There's a little metal bracket for that. Grab our screws. There's two different screws here, so just keep an eye on which one is which. The slightly larger one goes over this middle screw hole. Sorry, it's quite difficult to sort of show you because it is quite tiny on camera. And the last one goes just here. So that's that all refitted now. So then with this screen, you want to bring it flat, hook the top in because there's a little sort of catchy bit and then slowly go flat and just push, push it down all the way around like that until you hear it click. So there we go, that's all refitted. And then the last thing we're going to do is refit our pentalobe screws in the bottom here. So again, there's one, there's two, and screw those in. Okay, and then we'll turn it on. 
hopefully the battery's got some life in it. No, no juice in that battery, so let's get, a, I'll go and pop and get a charger and uh, get the phone turned on, then I'll come back to you in just a second. So there we go, phone is now on, um, and it all working as expected. Keypad's working, battery's holding charge, It'll take about 15 minutes to get to about 10%, so that's absolutely perfect. Um, so that's all working now as planned. So hopefully you found, enjoyed the video, you found it useful. Um, you've learned something about how to replace the batteries and the screens on the fives, and we've got a nice, pretty refurbished iPhone 5 in really good nick, ready to go for its owner. Anyway, uh, if you like the video, leave us a comment, um, drop us a kind of message, subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon for future notifications, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.